So if you have security cameras at your house and you're into locally hosted home automation and security, you should check out Frigate, the open source network video recorder designed to integrate with Home Assistant. I know home security cameras are all the rage now, but you really probably don't want something cloud connected, sending all your data up to Google or Amazon or whatever. You probably want to keep that data local on your own and Frigate will help you do that. At the same time, Frigate's going to help you do AI on your images to find things like people, and cats, and cars, and trucks, and all kinds of other stuff. And you can write home automation rules based on how many people are in your image, how many cats, that kind of stuff. And that's really useful in a home automation setting. So whether you just want to record your cameras to see if your neighbor Patrick has been texting and driving his way into your mailbox again, or you want to see your cat get in a fight with a neighborhood cat under your car, or like me, you want to count how many people are on your back deck so you know if you should turn the lights on or not, Frigate will help you with all of that. So today I'm going to set up Frigate on a Proxmox server. And not only am I going to set up Frigate, I'm going to use an LXC container for maximum efficiency. I'm going to hardware pass through my graphics card for video decoding. And I'm also going to hardware pass through my Coral TPU for AI detection. And all of those things require some more advanced configuration. So come along with me on this adventure. So to start this project, I'm going to create a new LXC container. Now I know that Frigate is a Docker container, but I'm going to run Frigate's Docker container inside LXC for management purposes. So let's get on that. So I'm going to start off here by creating a CT. This is going to be number 100, and we're going to call it Corona. Corona is the name of uh, a satellite that spies on people. So I'm going to make it privileged, and we're going to need to make sure we enable nesting. And we'll give it a password. I'm making it privileged so that I can pass through my hardware Coral TPU accelerator. If you don't have a TPU and you're not doing like video encoding with your GPU, unprivileged is fine. So here for template, we're going to pick Debian 12 standard. So I'm going to put my system drive on ZFS. That's my NVMe storage. This is just the operating system. Now I'm going to add another mount point for my videos. This is going to be on my data drive. And now we'll make it 1,000 gigs. Not going to back this one up. We're going to put it at var, var frigate. CPU cores, I don't know, 2 in memory, I don't know, 2048. Seems reasonable. Network, I'm going to just use defaults. And let's go. Now, before we start the container, we need to change some settings that weren't available to us in the wizard. So we are an unprivileged container. We're going to go to your features. We're going to enable nesting. We're going to enable fuse. And we can go ahead and start it. So the next step now that we have our container is we need to do updates on the container. But also, because I don't really like Docker, as some of you may know from other videos, we're going to use the technology called Podman Quadlet. And what Quadlet does is it lets us manage Docker containers or OCI containers using systemd. So we can write systemd unit files as we normally would for a service, and it will manage the container on the back end automatically with Podman, and it will use the system control journal and all of our normal Linux system utilities that we've come to know and love. But to use Quadlet, we need at least version 4.4 of Podman, and that is not included with Debian Bookworm. It says 4.3. So I'm going to upgrade from Bookworm to Trixie, which is the testing release. If Trixie is already out, you can just use Trixie. But, so here, let's uh, upgrade to Trixie and do a full upgrade of all the packages. So I'll just copy this command here. So what this does is it replaces the word bookworm with the word Trixie in sources.list, and then we update. It's not exactly the uh, quickest update. I mean, we're updating distributions, so it's, there's some stuff to update here. Perfect, now we can set up Frigate. So now the container's ready, let's install Frigate. At this point, you're gonna need a Frigate config.yaml and uh, I'm not the expert on writing those config.yamls, but the Frigate website has some information on that. If you want to read my own config, down at the bottom, link to the blog post that has my config if you want to read it with some passwords stripped out and stuff. So assuming you have a config.yaml, next up we're going to create the container. So the really cool thing about Quadlet is we just create these container files, and they have the same syntax as a systemd unit, and they automatically turn into Podman containers. So let's edit this file, and then I'm just going to copy this right in there. Of course, blog post has the example. 
feel free to copy it. So this file here has a number of things going on. So it's a system D unit and this container section is what Podman manages. So you can use system D syntax, you can add your own system D stuff as you normally would, and you can also add the container config. And down here at the bottom we have the image, so forget stable. I've also set it up to use host networking for this container because Docker networks cause a lot of problems, especially when you're trying to mix Docker and non-Docker networking. They will completely stomp over all of your IP tables and stuff, so we don't want that to happen. Also, in general, IPv4 support in Docker is very poor, and I don't want to have to deal with that because IPv6 is the future. So because all my cameras use IPv6, I need them to be able to get access from Frigate, so I need an IPv6 address, and using host networking ensures I can set that up. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So we'll save that. So last up, we system control, daemon reload, and then we should be able to start Frigate. Now the very first time you start the service, it's going to take forever because system D is pulling down all the Docker files in the background as it starts the service. That's why part of the command gives it uh, 15 minutes to start up, which is a long time. After that, it shouldn't take as long. It'll automatically update in the background as well, which is nice. So Frigate is up and running. A careful observer will note I am connected via an IP version 4 address. And that is because Frigate is dumb. So if we check what ports are currently bound on the container. So this is a list of all of the port bindings. So you can see we have some stuff on the system. And so 1935, that's the API port. That's bound to 0, .0, .0, 0, .0, 0, 0. It should be bound to colon colon or a star. But because it's bound to 0, .0, 0, .0, 0, 0, it's bound to only IPv4 addresses. We come in here to the web port 5000. Same problem, which is uh, pretty unfortunate. These guys here, the RTP ports, those are just fine. The RT, yeah, RTSP ports. It's just the port 5000 we have a problem with here, really. The real problem here is that Frigate, in bundling their software, also bundled Nginx, and also bundled a config for Nginx that we can't really change easily, and that config is not very good. So if we would like to use TLS or things like that, we could just add them to the Nginx that's already running, but no, it's Docker, so we have to have two Nginxes, or a Caddy and Nginx. So I'm gonna set up Caddy to proxy this. So here, I got the instructions we need to install Caddy. So we can come over here, paste those in, have fun. So while that's installing, here's the Caddy file we're gonna use. It's pretty simple, I just have the domain name, reverse proxy to port 5000, and we're gonna use TLS internal. You can, of course, use Let's Encrypt certificates or do your own thing or you can just put in a port number if you don't want to do a domain name, whatever. It's a simple caddy file. So now we're just going to remove the caddy file and write our own. Now we can start caddy. There we go, self signed certificate, usual stuff. And there we go. So now we fixed the TLS problem and the unstandard port problem I forget. Now it's a proper service like it should be. So as a final thing, I have a Coral TPU and I showed in another video, link up there the card for that, where I installed it in my mini server. So we're gonna try to get that up and running. Since we're in an LXC container, things are a bit tricky because Drivers in the kernel need to run on the host kernel, which is Proxmox. So in this case, we have to get the driver for the PCIe device and get that installed on the Proxmox host. Once we do that and the driver loads, we can pass that device on through to the privileged container. And then from there, we can pass it through in Podman to the Freya container. So let's come over here to the Proxmox host and install the driver for the Coral TPU. So they have documentation here on how to do it. And basically they've packaged Debian packages for Debian we can use. All we really need is gasket DKMS. So DKMS is dynamic kernel module support. Essentially allows you to dynamically build a kernel module for your kernel on the system. So when you install a DKMS module, every time you download a new kernel, it'll rebuild the kernel modules in DKMS so that they work with your new kernel. We actually don't need libedge TPU 
because we're not actually running software on Proxmox, we just need the kernel module to load. So I have a script here that does that on my website, you can copy that. Come over here, we're not going to be in the container, we're going to go to the main Proxmox system and run it there. So let's go ahead with that. So as you might have noticed, it's going to install a lot of stuff. One of the things it has to install is DKMS, but it also has to install all the kernel headers for whatever version of Proxmox you're running. Also, every single time you update Proxmox, it's going to recompile this kernel module. Just so you're aware of that, that's how it's supposed to be. So slight chance during this step, you'll get a kernel header error. If you get that error, it's very important that you update Proxmox to the latest version, then install PVE headers. If you install PVE headers without updating the latest version, you'll have a newer version of headers and older kernel. So update, install PV headers, instructions in the blog post on how to do that. If you didn't get any errors from DKMS, we should be able to just mod probe Apex. That should bring up the Apex driver. We should see a new Apex device. And sure enough, Apex zero. So now that Apex shows up, we can pass that Apex device on into our container. So we need to open up the config file from Proxmox, and this means the container needs to be not running. We need to stop the container. So I'll come here to the container and shut down. Then I'm going to go here. Here's what we have to add to the container. So it's going to pass this dev Apex 0 and also give it permissions to those type of devices. And the file is scpve lxc and then your container ID.conf. So in the Proxmox shell here on the system, and in my, my case container is at 100, 100.conf. Let's go to the bottom and paste that in. Then we can restart the container. Once we've passed that through the container, we can just make sure it showed up. Sure enough, we have Apex right there. So now we need to add that device to the frigate container. And so this is our line. So we're going to edit the systemd unit file from earlier where our container is. And we're going to come down to the container section. I guess we can go to the bottom, doesn't really matter. And we'll paste in the new changes. So add device apex0. Whenever we change this file, we have to run system control daemon reload to reload the units. and we restart the container. Then it should be back up and running. And last but not least, we add that detector to the Frigga config so we can use it. Once again, I got the contents here. This is the YAML. So you come over here, paste it into the YAML, and then we save and restart. So here in Frigate, we got Coral 1, and it is working. Excellent, that's exactly what we needed. So another neat trick we can do in Frigate is we can pass through our GPU to the container. So we can use the graphics card to decode the video it's getting from the cameras. As we can see over here, FFmpeg for each of these guys is using like 20% of our CPU each. Well, some of them are. Some of them are doing more than others. But um, yeah, it's doing some stuff. So what we'd really like is for the graphics card to be doing this work. So let's pass that on through. So over here again, we need to edit the LXC config. And because we need to edit the LXC config, we need to stop the LXC. So we're going to shut you down. So while that shuts down, I'm going to come over here to the shell and LS DRI. So in my case, I only have one graphics card, so it's render D128. If you have more than one graphics card, you will have to figure out which render node you need to use for the correct card. So now that we know it's D128, we're going to edit the container config file and add these lines to the end. Go down to the bottom and we add these guys. So we're going to allow this type of group, which is the render node, and we're going to pass render D128 into the container. And then we can restart the container. So now that we got the container rebooted, let's make sure our device shows up. And sure does, render D128. So now we need to edit the podman config for this container to add the device node and some extra capabilities. So that's the file we've been editing all day, 
And here are the lines we need to add. These guys here from my blog. Same container file we've been using, let's edit it. And we're gonna to add to the container section here. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom of the container section. So here's where we have add device, and let's just paste this in. So this does a couple things. So first we add the render node, so dev DRI render D128. Depending on what drive you're using, you may have to add this environment variable down here, libva driver name. You might not. Try it without it, um, and if that doesn't work, you can try uncommenting one of these. It depends a little bit on what drive you're using and if VA Info understands it or whatever. Um, if you're doing NVIDIA, not helping you at all. NVIDIA has made a complete mess of containers trying to monetize it. So sorry about that. If you're using a graphics card with open source drivers such as Intel or AMD, it should work like this. Every time we save that file, we have to daemon reload, so we do that. And then we will restart Frigate. That'll restart our container with the new config and we can go from there. So Frigate has VA info built in, so we can click on a button in Frigate to VA info. That'll tell us if we've passed everything through correctly, and then we can start enabling things in the Frigate config. So here we're going to system. It says hardware not, uh, Excel has not been set up, so we click VA info, and it loaded the IHD driver, and it shows all these entry points, which is great. So next up, we need to add an FFmpeg entry to our Frigate config. Um, if you're using Intel QuickSync video, you have to know if your cameras are H.264 or H.265. If you're using uh, AMD, you just use VA API. So here's the Frigate config a little bit here. And I'm going to come over to Frigate and go to my config. And we'll paste that in. Paste. Save and restart. If you have any issues, by the way, Frigate has a page on this, on how to configure your config.yaml, and you might have to reference it a little bit. So Frigate came up, we get this little error here. There was an error getting used to the stats. But if I scroll down, I see CPU usage is down across the board from 20%, and uh, that's probably a good thing. So to verify that the GPU is working, we need a tool that can monitor our GPU load. And if you have a AMD card that's called Radeon Top, if you have an Intel card, it's called Intel GPU Top, I got a little note here. So you either install apt install um, Intel GPU tools or Radeon top. And then the executable is called Intel GPU top. So over here I'm running it and it has found the video is doing some work. Also, if you have a really new Intel GPU, you might have to enable the guck. Little uh, blurb on the blog post about that. So good luck. So hopefully by this point, your setup is working as well as mine. Feel free to read the guide, link down in the description below, it has all of the commands I've been copying and pasting. There's some additional notes and additional quirks and stuff like that. If anyone wants to message me with quirks of their setup, I can make sure to add them. If you're using hardware I'm not using or things like that. Um, I don't have a USB Coral TPU to test, that's why I use the PCIe ones that I have. But if someone wants to send me a USB one, I would love to test that and add it to the guide as well. Um, what else? So Frigate has a whole guide on configuring Frigate itself. Mostly I was trying here to configure Frigate in Proxmox with Podman and all that kind of stuff. But the actual config.yaml for Frigate has quite a lot of documentation on itself. So feel free to read that. Link in the description below for that as well. If you'd like to make a donation or support me monetarily, you can head on to my Ko-fi. Link for that as well. Anything's appreciated. It really helps out. I also have a Discord server linked down below for that if you want to chat with me about this or anything else. And as always, I'll see you guys on the next adventure.